Once again, we have a case where a victim reached out to the authorities to help and they did absolutely nothing. Who can be held accountable? everyone and welcome back to my channel and killer concepts the place where we talk about all things true crime before we get started today please make sure to hit that red subscribe button down below and turn on your post notifications so you do not miss any future content today we are once again going to be talking about something i am very passionate about domestic violence and how in this case it resulted in murder suicide this is the case of a 35 year old woman named nitya debbie ramrup a mother of three who was shot and killed by her estranged husband this happened only days before their divorce was to be finalized i am going to warn you, while I try and keep my opinions to myself during a lot of these videos, I most likely won't on this one. Cases like these get my blood boiling, especially when there is evidence of very clear cries for help from the victim. There really just is no excuse for it. With that being said, let's jump on into it. On October 31st, 2023, 35-year-old Nitya Devi Ramroop, a mother of three, was shot and killed by her estranged husband, Bishan Ramroop, in her driveway outside of her Katy, Texas home. Ramroop was actually trying to keep this home a secret from Bishan as she had told many people that he was not only physically abusive, but he had been stalking her. Not only did Bishan shoot Nitya Devi that night, but he also attacked her 25-year-old sister with a shard of glass, stabbing her multiple times before she could finally fight him off and call the police. Let's not forget to mention Nitya Devi and Bishan's three children were inside the home at the time this would occur. Bishan would then get in his car and take off. Police would find him later about um, half a mile away from the home, dead of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. ABC 13 notes that this occurred only days before the couple's divorce was to be finalized. This is typical for this kind of case. It's not surprising. So the questions I am sure you are asking is why did this happen and how did they come to this? This is where I get a little fired up because I 100% believe this situation could have been prevented and that the Harris County Sheriff's Office and the Fort Bend Sheriff's Office dropped the ball. The incidents of stalking happened over both jurisdictions, but before we get into the thick of the abuse and accounts of what happened between the couple leading up to the divorce and then the shooting, I just want you to know that a lot of the information that I'm going to give you comes from Nitya Devi's divorce attorney, Uch Ohaya. He obviously had a lot of this information since the abuse was the reason that she was filing for divorce and she was probably going to be using it in her divorce case. According to Ohio, there were multiple incidents that occurred between Vishan and Nitya Devi in which the police did absolutely nothing, but they were contacted. One of these incidents was when Vishan reportedly followed Nitya Devi to her friend's house. When the police were called, they said they could not take action because no crime had been committed, even though clearly he was stalking her. They were no longer together and she was frightened of him. She was trying to stay away from him. Now, this was not the only time he was seen stalking her. From the time she had filed for divorce from him, he had been spotted on several occasions following her around. Another incident that absolutely blows my mind is when Bishan Ranroop followed Nitya to a bar where she was having a fun night out with her friends. Her estranged husband was seen pushing her, like he, he found her at the bar. He was seen pushing her and then trying to drag her out of the bar. Ohio reports that a friend's husband saw the altercation and he in intervened. Bishan would back off and would go outside, but then he would vandalize Nitya's car. Even with this incident, police would not file charges against Bishan. Not only did multiple people in the bar see her being accosted by her estranged husband, 
but there was literal camera footage of him damaging her car. This is assault, harassment, stalking, property damage. I just don't get how the police officers couldn't have done anything in this situation. While they were hiding behind this excuse, I just, I really think they dropped the ball. There was clearly intent to harm Nitya Devi. This wasn't the only time she called for help, and yet they did absolutely nothing. Multiple news outlets have reached out to the Harris County Sheriff's Office about this incident, but none have yet to hear back. However, there was a time when a spokesperson for the sheriff's office told ABC 13 that Nitya Devi had contacted them in June claiming she was being stalked and wanted to know her options. All they told her to do was to contact her attorney, which obviously she did. This is how he knows all this information. But if the sheriff's office was telling her to do this for reasons like getting a restraining order, we all know how... They don't really work in domestically violent situations like this one. The perpetrator is not going to stop over a piece of paper. Women like Nitya Devi are always in the most danger when leaving their abuser. And this case is just a perfect example of why, and it's so sad. Quote, when Nitya Devi first came to me, she reported that there'd been years of physical abuse in her marriage end quote, says Ohio, who began working with her about a year ago. Quote, she was afraid he was going to continue abusing her, more so because she wanted a divorce, end quote. People report that the couple had been married for almost 18 years, but she told her attorney that he subjected her to abuse and threats throughout that entire time. Let's not forget to mention Nitya Devi was 35 years old when she was killed. This means that if they had been married almost 18 years, she would have been 17 years old at the time they got married. She was barely even adult. In some places, this wouldn't even be considered an adult. So if abuse had been going on that long, could you imagine the kind of mental trauma Nitya Devi had went through? So according to Ohio, the several years of abuse and threats included a time when apparently Bishan was, quote, playing around with knives, end quote, in front of her children and pushed her down in front of their children. He would also say inappropriate things about their mother to them, all the time. People believed that they were frightened of their father. At one point during their marriage, the Texas Department of Family Protective Services was even contacted regarding the situation. But once again, nobody seemed to do anything. They did not call in the authorities for help. In the in the articles that I read, they were called by uh, the school that her children went to after they had gotten an anonymous message about the household. So this woman, was reaching out for help and had multiple times and nobody would do anything to help. Once she would file for divorce, people notes that nothing really settled down as there was then just property and custody issues. Ohio said that Bishan would make threats directly to Nitya Devi and he would even tell his one friend that she would face consequences if she kept trying to get her share of their asset. Apparently not only was Bishan harassing Nitya Devi, but his family began to harass her as well. They would contact her at her workplace and her estranged husband's sister would even confront her while in the grocery store, according to Ohio. Ohio said that through it all, Nitya Devi showed incredible strength and only was looking forward to overcoming the obstacle. ABC 13 states Ohio was representing Nitya for about a year before her death and said she worried her estranged husband may hurt her leading up to the divorce trial. Quote, her increasing fear was the trial coming up that he would do something to harm her, Ohio said. She was being told by his friends that he was saying some very alarming things, end quote. It would turn out that her fears had been totally justified and that Bishan Ramroop was just a ticking time bomb. Not only do I believe that the police failed her, but Nitya Devi's attorney also has stated 
multiple times that he believes that she was failed by the system. They tried a protection order. It didn't work. She reached out to the police at least three or four times one time including physical damage to her vehicle and they did nothing there was even footage of it so who should be held accountable for this Bishan Ramroop is dead so who can be held accountable for Nitya Devi's death and her sister's attack will we be seeing a civil case against the sheriff's office or will we be seeing any wrongful death suit since nothing was pursued will Anybody hold Vishan Ramroop's family accountable for the part they played in her harassment? I know I want to see something done and I'm sure I am not the only one. I am tired of seeing victims reaching out for help and nothing being done. This is the reason that many victims don't want to speak out because the authorities don't do anything. Now this isn't all cases, but the authorities do nothing and then it puts them in even more danger. The abuser finds out that the police were called on them or children's services and that only makes the situation worse for them. But anyway, like I said, we need to talk about situations like this. We need to bring attention to them. We need to make victims feel that if they reach out for help, somebody will help them. If you or anybody you know has problems with domestic violence, please call the domestic violence hotline. I will pop it up right here for you and it will also be in the description box down below. Call for help. I will also include the suicide hotline if anybody has problems with something like that. So with that being said, that is all I have on Nitya Devi's case. It is a very sad one. It really disappoints me as I said that I feel this could have been prevented and due to departments falling short of their responsibilities, somebody is now dead and another person had been attacked, her 25 year old sister. There is also three kids without parents now, which is always the saddest part of these situations. So before you go, please make sure to hit that red subscribe button down below and turn on your post notifications so you do not miss any future content. I'm going to try and talk more and more about domestic violence, but we'll continue to talk about our other cases as well. If you have any case suggestions, please send them to killerconceptsvlog at gmail.com. You can also follow me on social media. All of my handles are down below in the description box, as well as any sources that I use to get the information for this video. Before you go, just remember that the world's most dangerous minds hide in the most unlikely places. Stay safe.